My name is Jazzy and welcome back to my Pokemon Pokédex. It's spooky season, so of course I had to dress up. As you can tell, my makeup, my Sally for Christmas, but we're not talking about that for today. In fact, I wanted to take this opportunity to talk about something a little bit different and talk about a movie from my childhood. Now, if you grew up in the 90s like me, there's a chance you remember this movie as well. Although well, probably vaguely. This movie used to air a lot on the Disney Channel around Halloween. In fact, it aired around the same time that Hocus Pocus first started airing on the channel as well. Unfortunately, unlike Hocus Pocus, this movie didn't really have the same impact and didn't become a lasting childhood favorite. Yeah, this movie kind of got lost through time. However, I remember it because I remember everything I've ever watched. Okay, that's not true. But I think if you've talked to any of my family members, They'll probably tell you that I remember a lot. But, like I said, I remember this movie, and it kind of had a It kind of took a hold of my brain for a while. There was a time where I just kept remembering it, but unfortunately, I couldn't remember the name of the movie, and it drove me crazy. So I kept Googling different phrases to figure out what movie it was. I kept Googling Boy and Frankenstein or something like that. Not the title of the movie. The movie's actually called, the movie's actually called Frankenstein. Luckily, when I did finally remember the title, I was able to look up some info on the movie. And there really isn't a lot. The movie is also not even available on any streaming platform, at least in the U.S. So when I originally would start searching for the movie on YouTube, I really was only able to find a few clips. Luckily, though, someone was able to re-upload not just the entire movie, but also the commercials that played along with it when it was airing on TV. The movie is about a young boy is obsessed with movie monsters. He's constantly daydreaming about classic movie monster scenes where he and his brother would be heroes. Unfortunately, this gets on the nerve of the movie teacher, played by Miss Fletcher, who is most famous for playing Nurse Ratchet in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I'm going to assume that she was probably cast because she kind of played a similar role in this movie. A no-nonsense woman who kind of just wants to suck the fun out of her life. Earl? Now, do I have your attention? What do we have here? Nothing. May I see it? I'm, so, I'm sorry, Mrs. Perdue. More monsters. <laughs> well, Dr. Frankenstein, I think you know the routine. Yes, ma'am. Although in this movie, she doesn't get strangled. His mom's also not too big about the whole monster obsession thing, and would rather that he focus on school and was on the side of his teacher. And that was his teacher again. Tess is practically a juvenile delinquent. And a lazy daydreamer. His dad on the hand was supportive of his interest in dreams. Mainly because he used to be a dreamer as well and tried to make it in Hollywood at one point. His dad is played by... Uh, Burt Reynolds! Thank you, Angela. Sadly, around the three-minute mark, his father dies of a heart attack, which devastates the family, but especially Earl. Later at a carnival, Earl sees an attraction that claims to have real Frankenstein's monster's body. This is believed to be the actual and authentic Frankenstein monster. It has traveled with our carnival since 1948, when it was purchased by the owner during a visit to Budapest, Hungary. Really 
alligator gets a hold of the body after it falls off a truck as the carnival's passing by, conveniently right in front of him. Then decides to try and bring the monster back to life. So, as you can tell from the summary, it's pretty much a family drama with Frankenstein's monster thrown in. During the movie, there are several segments reenacting classic monster movies like Dracula, The Night of the Dead, and of course Frankenstein. Public domain. don't know. You want to know what they are? I'll tell you. They're evil. Pure walking evil that shambled their way out of the grave. And they know we're in here. These were probably the segments I remember the most from watching, and might be the reason why I remember this movie so much. This movie probably introduced me to a lot of the universal monsters and beasts. But for some reason, I forgot about the dad dying in this movie. Like, I remembered him being there, I just don't remember that he died, and that was kind of part of the reason why he wanted to bring the monster back to life. In fact, his dad is the one who came up with the sketch that Earl uses to try and what is it I always say that I need? What? Right. Yeah, and uh, don't forget those electrical wires for the lightning to come down. Well, you'll go get it, right? That's really cool, Dad. Yeah. But would it work? Of course it'll work. Upon rewatching, though, I found the scenes between Earl and his dad to be really sweet. The relationship between him and his son is very nurturing and encouraging. You know, you got a dream. You got to stick with it. You got to go for it. You can't. Uh, you can't back off. So make me a promise. You two have a dream. You go for it with everything you got, right? I promise, Dad. I promise. Good night. Good night, Dad. He even kisses his sons on the cheek. Normalize dads showing affection towards their son. When Burt Reynolds' character passes away, it's actually a pretty effective scene, especially thanks to Earl's actor doing some pretty great face acting. Let me see my dad. My name's William. I'm sorry, you can't. Can you take them back to the waiting room, please? Yeah, sure.
he was in a few other kids' movies, but I think he later retired from acting. So I also really like the progression of Earl's relationship with his mother. Of course, at first, she starts off as the strict parent, the fantasy-forbidding mother, as you will. Or, I guess, monster-forbidding mother, in this case. Don't you think you should spend a little more time studying? I already did, Mom. This is garbage, okay? It's garbage. It's fantasy. Life is a lot harder than this. Hey! Don't even try. Now, I want you to buckle down and concentrate on your schooling. Do you hear? I had a great report card last time. Oh, it wasn't good enough. Your conduct grades were unsatisfactory. I don't want that teacher calling here again. I'm not bad, Mom. It's her. She's a bad teacher. Oh, you think so? Yes. All she does all day is put busy work on the board so she doesn't even have to bother with us. I don't think that's being a It doesn't matter what you think, Earl. You are a little boy, and little boys are supposed to do what they're told. And if your father was... What? What about him? She just wants what's best for her son. And unfortunately, she thinks that not encouraging his dreams is the best way to do that. However, towards the end of the movie, she does come around. She realizes how much her son is like her late husband and learns that she shouldn't be suppressing that side of him. Your Honor, he's a great student and a decent boy. And he doesn't deserve to be sent away like some criminal because he's not. Now, I'm his mother. I'll handle his punishment, but I won't punish him for dreaming. Never again. Of course, I have to mention this, Ryan Gosling is in this movie. I believe this is one of his first roles, or possibly his first movie role. He plays Earl's best friend. What's going on? It's going to be a present for Dad. <laughs> Who's she? Oh, this is a Karen. She's from Ohio. We're going together. Where are you going? She's his girlfriend, dummy. Oh. He later helps Earl transfer the monster into an abandoned building. He and Earl drive the monster to the building in a in a truck by themselves. And I remember watching this this scene as a kid and thinking, "Wow, it must be so cool to drive a car." Now I'm, I'm an adult and I'm terrified of the thought of driving a at one point, the kids have to go get gas, and they luckily they run into one of probably the stupidest gas clerk ever. Like, sir, that is clearly a dead. That is clearly either a dummy or a dead body. Like, how do you even think that could possibly be like a still breathing human? See now, ain't you a little young to be driving that there truck? Well, you know, yeah, we are, but our. Uh... Our dad's dead drunk, and we gotta drive him home, you know. Oh, man, you ain't kidding, are you? That looks awful. Um, don't you think you boys ought to drive him to the hospital or something? I mean, he don't look real good. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that then, okay? Okay. Yeah. Um... Pretty sure when I was a kid, like, I'm pretty sure I, I, I thought he was stupid then, and he, it's especially stupid now. Sorry, I just had to, t I, sorry, I just had to bring that up. I care how drunk you are, you can't, I'm, I don't think it would cause you to look like that. Eventually, they're able to transfer the monster to the building, and then work on their plan to bring the monster back to life. The guy's already put together. He's just in a state of suspended animation. All you gotta do is give him a few thousand volts of electricity, and it'll be as good as new. Oh, a few thousand volts, right? Yeah, where are we gonna get a few thousand volts? It's the fall, Kenny. We should be getting some thunderstorms every week now. And you know where there's thunder? There's lightning. Unfortunately, the wrench gets thrown in, and the police are tipped off by Earl's own teacher, who's over, who overhears Earl 
talking about the monster with his brother and their new friend, Stan. You took it, didn't you? I knew it! Quiet! This is so cool. Is it the real thing? I think so. I want in. Yeah, this is Gonzalez. Uh, my name is Betty Perdue. I'm a teacher at the junior high. Uh, yes, ma'am. How may I uh, help you? Well, as a matter of fact, Deputy, I think I can help you. You see, I think I know who's got that monster. It's one of my students, Earl Williams. Fortunately, when the police do show up at the house, since the monster isn't actually there, he gets away with it. For now. Of course, everything comes ahead when a storm starts to brew in and lightning starts to strike. As we know, lightning plus dead guy equals light. You can see that they rush to they rush to the abandoned building to try and bring the monster back to life. The adults, of course, realize what the kids are trying to do and rush to the abandoned building as well to try and stop them. Fortunately, right as they arrive, lightning strikes and. Believe it. It should have worked. It had to. Stand back, son. Huh? I guess it was just a dummy, Earl. Sorry, Earl, but we we're gonna have to go down to the station. No, it's alive. I know it is. Nothing happens. Looks like the monster was just a dummy all along. Was it? Later, before a judge, Earl's teacher, who is also there for some reason, uh, tries to convince the judge and his mother to send him to reform school for his actions. Fortunately, Earl's mother realizes how wrong she's been this entire time and defends her son and says that he's not a bad kid. And she decides that she would rather handle his punishment. Finally, everyone agrees to it. Even though Earl did steal a carnival prop, kidnapped another kid from a hospital, and technically aided with stealing hospital supplies. But his dad died, so after sweet dream sequence with Earl, his see their dad for one last time and get some closure, they finally get to see what happened to the monster. Just call me Frankenstein, King Tut's mommy was a friend of mine, now I'm back in black, and I feel so good, gonna do the hairy scary in your neighborhood. That's Turns out it worked after all. He brought the monster- Crazy son of a gun did it. He brought a monster back to life. Yeah, pretty much the ending credits might be the main reason I remembered this movie for so long. Now, seeing the monster walking around in the desert as a kid really freaked me out. Probably because back then, when I would watch a movie, I honestly did think a lot of things that would happen in the movie could happen in real life because I was I was a stupid kid. So it just made me think: What if one day we're driving by and that monster is? Just what we see that monster just walking around, and yeah, that idea just completely freaked me out. Now, did this movie hold up after all these years? I mean, I enjoyed it, but I really do think that nostalgia played a lot into that. Not necessarily nostalgia for this particular movie, but I just think for nostalgia for 90s movies in general. I'm about to go on my whole kind of old lady rant a little bit, but I do kind of miss the days in the 90s when you know movies would just play on tv like you would either you know just flip through the channels looking for something to watch and then find a movie and then just end up enjoying it and then you would and all i also miss just when knowing when the when a certain holiday season would come and you just knew certain movies would start to play on on, on a certain channel we sort of have that with the whole 31 days of halloween on freeform right now but it's not exactly the same knowing that we can also see a lot of these same movies on different streaming platforms. But back then, you look forward to that certain time of the year. And that's kind of what this movie reminds me of. Especially with all the commercials that play. I mean, while it's while it's an interesting concept, and of course the ending scene is pretty memorable, at least to me, it it's at the end of the day, it's still a lot of... At the end of the day, it's a little 
I would say it's a little bit more serious than Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus is kind of like a romp. It's very campy. Here, it's, it's weirdly very grounded. A lot of the acting performances are very grounded. Like I said, it, the heart of it's kind of a family drama about losing a loved one and dealing with grief. That's kind of the main point of the movie. It just, like I said, throws in the concept of Frankenstein's monster. If it had been maybe a little bit more campier, more fun, like probably if they actually brought the monster back to life and they got to have adventures with them, probably would be a little bit more memorable. Would probably be a little bit more memorable, but yeah. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna link the I'm not gonna link the full movie just in case it kind of gets taken down. If you just search on YouTube, Frankenstein to me, I'm sure you will find it. So I just recommend checking it out. Or if you do remember this movie and you want to see for yourself whether or not it holds up, also recommend checking it out. Anyway, thanks for going on this journey with me. I know it's a little bit different than my normal content, but I'm kind of trying to branch things out a little bit. Uh, let me know what you think about that. Me talking about older movies and maybe doing kind of more of a recap style. Anyway, just let me know what you think. Let me know if you remember this movie. Let me know if you have no idea what I was talking about at all. Um, and let me know if there are any other childhood movies that you remember watching as a kid, especially around Halloween. Happy spooky seasons and thanks for watching. Bye.